Hi, this is Mitch Doan, and along with Jamie Richardson, we're your hosts of the Breakthrough Active podcast. We aim to deep dive into health and fitness that will help bring you a better understanding of topics that are of interest to you and can help you on your own journey. If you are enjoying the episodes, we'd love for you to leave us a rating on the platform you listen to your podcasts. Enough from me, sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to the Breakthrough Active Podcast. Uh, I'm your host again, this is Mitch, and today we are going to be continuing the conversation about intermittent fasting. So I had the first episode in a three-episode series yesterday about the foundations and the basics and a little more about what is intermittent fasting, which did generate quite a bit of conversation. I got a fair few messages from you guys who listened uh, with some more questions, which I will be covering here today and then again tomorrow. So I do appreciate uh, the interaction, and obviously this is a topic that uh, is of interest to a lot of people. I feel like uh, it is something for those people who have been around the health and fitness industry, whether it is um, through training or, or just being part of uh, forums online or doing their own information, um, they have been subjected to some information about intermittent fasting. Not all of it is correct, so that's where I am aiming to add a little bit of clarity for some people who may be wanting to find out a little bit more. So yesterday discussed the basics and the foundations. Today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of intermittent fasting and how I see that uh, as it relates to some of the positive parts of it and then also some of the negative parts of it as well. So going to start with the positives or the pros that I see uh, within intermittent fasting. So the first one and the the most important one for for most people who are looking at uh, including this in their life and looking to go down down the uh, the way of doing some intermittent fasting is weight management. So for people who are either looking to maintain their weight or people who are looking to lose weight, uh, this can be a really effective tool for for those people to help control and manage their their calories without even really having to follow, uh, I guess, a calorie goal or track macronutrients or, or have a calorie calculator, MyFitnessPal or something like that. So let me talk about that a little bit more because the way that fasting, intermittent fasting is set up and, and if you didn't watch yesterday's or listen to yesterday's episode, I encourage you to do that because this will make more sense if you have. Um, there are a few different ways we can we can do intermittent fasting. The most popular one uh, is a 16-8 fast. So that means that every day we fast for 16 hours and then we have eight hours in which we eat. Or a five, the second most popular is a 5-2 is a one, uh, whereas where five days of the week we eat normally, then two days we have a very low calorie uh, approach, two days out of the seven, which as well um, is intermittent fasting. So the reason why both of these approaches and intermittent fasting in general can be really effective for weight management is it limits the amount of time that you're actually eating. So let's use the 16 8 uh, approach as an example. If we are only eating for eight hours of the day, it really limits how much you are going to eat. Now, I'm not going to say that it's uh, impossible to, to still overeat in eight hours because um, there are Tim Tams and Tim Tams are fantastic. And if we eat enough of those, then we are gonna still be eating too many calories. But uh, in general, uh, if we are only eating for eight hours of the day, it's gonna be really challenging to, to go over your caloric intake that, you're, that, you're, that you should be eating um, as it pertains to weight loss. Because if you think about normally, if you're someone who gets up and has breakfast at seven or eight o'clock and then you're eating throughout the day, grazing throughout the day, you have your dinner, you have your dessert at 8.30, that means you've been eating for, for 12 or 13 hours. So it, it's just a lot longer period that you are eating and, and that means that it does open itself to overeating because there's just more opportunity to do so because of the hours in the day. So limiting the window in which you are actually eating is going to organically decrease how many calories that you consume each day. And that's why intermittent fasting doesn't specify as much about food quantity because they know, 
people know that when they are reducing the amount of time they're eating, they're going to be naturally reducing how many calories that they have anyway. So when you look at other diets, whether it is a calorie counting, macro counting, uh, or things that do look at numbers a little bit more, look at calories and protein and fats and carbs, that's when you really are zoning in on the amount of food you're having, whereas this one, an intermittent fasting, focuses more on the time frame and we know that if we are eating for a shorter period of time throughout the day, we're far more likely to be eating less calories. So that's number one, and I think that's the most important for people who are looking to uh, manage their weight. Uh, number two, another another really good benefit is it has really clear rules. So I think some other approaches to nutrition can be a little bit airy-fairy and have a lot of gray area, uh, but I feel like there are some really clear rules as it pertains to fasting, so or intermittent fasting. So if you're, again, using the 16-8 approach as an example, if that is what you're, what you're doing, it's very clear that you are fasting between 8 p.m. and 12 p.m. as an example, and you're not allowed to eat anything during that period. So it's, it's very black and white. You just simply cannot eat. And then throughout the hours of 12 and 8, you are eating as normal, but it is very clear and very understood that for those other 16 hours of the day, you're not eating at all. So it's very clear that what you need to do uh, you know, when you are looking at calories and macros and, and paleo and there's a few other approaches, there are a few, uh, well, paleo is not actually too bad, to be honest, that's quite clear as well. But when you look at calories and macros mainly, there are a lot of further questions and a lot of gray areas as it pertains to what type of protein you should be getting. Can I have powder? Uh, how much sugar should I be having? How many calories is this? So there's, there's a lot more, lot more to it. Uh, whereas I find that intermittent fasting is very clear which I think is a, is a really big benefit. Uh, and the last one, it, it has got some, some proven scientific uh, data-driven benefits that have been shown uh, to, to help for people who are doing intermittent fasting on a regular basis. So it has been shown to improve heart health, tissue health, cognition, memory, cellular repair, and then also been shown to improve your insulin levels. So all, all really important parts of our health and there's been quite a bit of study done and quite a bit of analysis done on people who do intermittent fasting to show that this has a positive impact on these other aspects of our health. So that, that is science, that is data. So it has been proven uh, that people who are doing this for, for an extended period of time are seeing other health benefits. So that's obviously a really big pro. Uh, now, for, for the cons, I did just want to make it three, three pros and three cons for each. There are a few others here and there, but I wanted to pick the 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 main three pros and the main three cons just to make it easy so that's my three pros the three cons or the three negatives uh, first one which i think is the most important is that it doesn't fit into everyone's lifestyle so i touched on this yesterday uh, as it relates to shift workers and people who maybe have irregular uh, schedule with with their work or with their family life um, but it can it can be hard for people to fit this eating window and this fasting period uh, into their lifestyle. If they are someone who likes to go out and meet up with friends for breakfast and, and coffee, uh, then obviously that's going to impact things because if you're going out at 9 a.m. for breakfast and you're meant to be fasting till 12, then you're not really meant to be able to do that. Uh, or you are going to be the person who sits there and has their black coffee and no food while everyone else feels bad about eating around you. So that's just a very quick example of how it can affect lifestyle as well as dinner. Uh, if you've got a late dinner with friends because or family because something happens and you get uh, they get held up or you've got a late, late booking or you can't get into a restaurant earlier and the booking's not until 7.30, you don't end up eating till 8.30 uh, and you're meant to be fasting from 8.00. I mean, what happens there? Do you just pull the pin on dinner and not eat because it's past eight o'clock? Do you make an allowance? It's on your mind. You start to stress about it. So obviously there's, there's some uh, ramifications for that as well in a social setting. Uh, and then alcohol as well. Obviously alcohol is, is often consumed outside of, uh, let's say, that 12 to 8 period. So in, in times when you're maybe meant to be fasting and then there's a whole nother um, no whole other avenue of questions about you know what happens there with with alcohol and, and your lifestyle but obviously the point and, and where I feel like it is the most important part here is it does have a really big impact on 
on social life and your lifestyle. So you need to look at your current lifestyle, your current social life and everything that, that you do on a day to day and week to week basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. And see if it is something that is going to be impacting <clears throat> on you regularly. <clears throat> and if it is, then then to be honest, it's not probably something that is suitable for you. If it is just a here and there thing, um, you know, when you've got a, a, a celebration, a wedding or a weekend away or something, I mean, obviously that's not as much of an issue. But if it is something where you're regularly needing to break the rules and it won't fit into your lifestyle, then I, uh, I'll go out on a limb and say it's not really suitable or appropriate for you. Um, next one ties into that one there again, and it, it is about your family life. So it, it can impact uh, what you do as a family as well. Uh, a lot of it is based around the, the timing that you have breakfast and, and dinner, and, and if it is a big thing for you guys to sit down to a family Sunday breakfast. Um, and again, if you're not someone who's having that breakfast because you're meant to be fasting, then that can that can cause a little bit of a... An issue in, in family life, kids can ask why aren't you eating, they might feel you know, strange about eating or, or your husband or your wife might, might have some issues with, with you sort of excluding yourself from, from that meal. Uh, and then also the timing for dinner, um, depending on what times you, you choose to fast, if it is going to be interrupting your dinner time and you're needing to have dinner earlier and then your family has dinner later. Uh, or something similar to that, then obviously that that also is going to impact on on your family life as a whole. So, just things you need to consider. If 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 the meal times are really important for you and your family, and, and you have them at certain times normally, um, then you need to really consider that when you are choosing if you are wanting to pursue this avenue of intermittent fasting because for, from my experience with, with myself and also with, with having other people, other clients and other members doing it, i found that if it is making too many disruptions with your family life, it just isn't really something that's suitable and, and not worth it in the end because you're having to make so much other change that it, it ends up impacting other parts of your life um, in a negative way and can often be the trade-off for the positive health benefits that potentially intermittent fasting has. So. Weigh it all up and see if it's something that, that is going to be good for you there as it pertains to your family life. Uh, and the last one, which I did cover, uh, I think I covered briefly yesterday, is it's not optimal and not fantastic for people who work out and train early in the morning. So if you are someone who trains at 5.15, 6 o'clock, 6.45, um, then you're going to be finished your workout 6 or 7, 7 o'clock, and then your fasting is going to be continuing for another four or five or six hours. Now, without going too far down this wormhole, you, your body and your, your muscles do require protein after your workout to help start that recovery that repair process. And if you are waiting another five or six hours until you're refueling your body with some protein, then it is going to impact your recovery. So for people who work out you know, mid-morning or, or in the afternoon, it can be a little bit easier to manage. There still are some considerations you need to make to make sure that you're not um, you're not super full and and haven't had a big meal just prior to you working out. But there are there are ways you can manage that with your time. But find that one of the setbacks, one of the trade-offs, to intermittent fasting is for those people who work out in the morning. It, it is hard. Uh, for your body to be fully recovered because you're not getting that, that source of protein within an hour or two after your workout like it is recommended. So again, just like my other two points here, it is something you need to consider. Uh, perhaps it doesn't make as much of a difference to you. Uh, maybe it is something that you know in the past, even when you weren't intermittent fasting, you weren't really getting a, a source of protein within a few hours of working out. So if that were the case, it's not going to make that much difference. Uh, but I felt like it was important for me to raise here because it is something that, that you do need to look at. And if you are someone who is training regularly and perhaps you do find that recovery is a little bit harder, you get a little bit more sore and finding it a little bit, a little bit more challenging to recover from workouts on a day-to-day -day basis, then, uh, then it is something that you should consider with the protein intake you have after your, your workout there early in the morning. Um, so that was my third one, and uh, that sort of finishes off my pros and cons. That there are some others, some other benefits and, and other uh, negatives uh, to intermittent fasting. I, I feel like these were the three 
for each that were really relatable and important for you guys who might be looking at doing it. Um, but as always, if you do have any more questions about this, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to, to discuss anything more with you. But I, uh, we do have one more one more episode in the series here tomorrow. So, so stay tuned for that one if this is of interest to you. Uh, and hopefully for today, you're able to, to learn something and, and, um, and, uh, and are able to apply it to your own life and see if it is something that is going to be applicable to you and your pursuit of uh, intermittent fasting in the future. So thanks for listening, guys. I'll talk to you on the next one. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If there is a topic you'd like us to discuss that we haven't already, please make sure you reach out in Facebook Messenger and we'll do our best to cover it in the upcoming episodes. For those of you enjoying the podcast, we'd love for you to like, subscribe and leave us a rating. It really helps us grow and spread the good word. Hoping you're all having a great day and we'll be sure to see you on the next one.